What's up ladies and gents? Coming at you with another DIY video. Have you ever wondered how to bleed your brakes on your motorcycle, scooter, ATV, or even a car? I got the video for you. I know there's a lot of videos out there, but none with the tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you. I hope you gain a lot of knowledge from this because some of these things have taken me like 15 years to figure out. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's talk about brake fluid. This is DOT 4. This is kind of like an upgrade from DOT 3. DOT 3 is kind of old school. DOT 3 eats paint super easy, so does DOT 4, but not quite as easy. It just has a higher boiling point. They even have a DOT 5.1, which is for like heavy duty trucks and heavy duty applications. And then they have the silicone based DOT 5 that you see in Harley Davidson's. You won't use any of those in a motorcycle, scooter, or ATV. You're always going to use DOT 3 or DOT 4 in general. Now let me show you a little hack with these brake fluid. So you notice the uh, bottle's got some foil over it. So we're just going to take a little puncture and we're going to pop a little hole in it. Just like that. This makes it super easy to pour so you don't over pour the brake fluid. That's uh, hack number one. Another thing I should mention is dot three and dot four are compatible together. So if you already had dot three in your system and you want to upgrade to dot four, it's okay if they mix with each other. A lot of times on the top of your master cylinder, like this one, this is not a good example because it doesn't say it, but you'll see a dot three or dot four, it'll recommend which one to actually use right on the top there. It's normally stamped in there. If it's not stamped, you can use a dot three or a dot four. We want to make sure that our brake line is facing down. So imagine an air bubble in this hose. If it was looped like this, uh, rounded, you're going to get air caught up here. I know it sounds crazy to even mention this, but I see it all the time. You need to make sure your brake line isn't going above the master cylinder. Okay. So adjust it in, in such a way that it's going to be below the master cylinder so that air bubbles are going to come up and go into the master cylinder. This is trick number two. Another pretty dang cool nifty trick. If you look at your brake caliper, this isn't the same for every single brake caliper. This is an Adeline brake caliper, and this has this little trick. So if you notice, this is where the bleeder valve is. This is where we're gonna bleed the air out. If that bleeder valve was down here, we would be in trouble. We would actually have to flip this brake caliper over so that we can get the air coming to the top. So what we can do, check this out. I can pull that out of there and put this down there and put this one back. See that? So now if it was like that, then we can switch it. It's got a little dummy plug. So you can switch these around depending on your application. That's super, super important. Right now I have it wrong. This needs to be at the highest point. So we'll go ahead and fix that. So you're always going to want your bleeder at the very top. If it has the ability to switch it, do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to pull this and flip it over because you're always going to want your bleeder at the top of the brake caliper. This is hack number three. So by now, you're noticing a trend. We want our air bubbles to be at the very top. So hose down here as far as we can. You just want to make sure that no air, just picture air bubbles being caught in like top sections of things. That's what we want to be mindful of. So there's two tools you can use to bleed brakes. There's the backyard mechanic style, which I'm going to show you. Then I'll show you the other style. So if you get just an empty container, this is just an old uh, brake fluid bottle, and a hose. Very important that the hose fits right on the end of the bleeder valve, nice and tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this hose down. So it just looks just like that. So next step is I'm going to take the end of our hose and just push it right on to the end of our bleeder valve. It's important that it's really tight. This is the backyard mechanic style. So we're going to be using this contraption because most people are going to be using this setup. If I want to get fancy, I have this vacuum suck. I just pump it up and at the other end there's a hose and I just hook this up just the same way as I would on this end and I wouldn't actually even have to do much just pump it and it's going to suck the fluid out super quick super easy these are this is the ideal way these come in multiple different 
ways that there's a hand pump. This one's more for like draining oil and things like that, but I use it for bleeding brakes. But like I said, we're gonna be using this sucker for this job. That's really all we need. I used this style for mobile repair for years. Works great. If you notice, I have the handlebars turned in such a way that the brake fluid is level in the master cylinder. So remember, we put our tiny little hole in the top, so you gotta be careful because if you squeeze the bottle, it's gonna squirt out like a squirt gun. So just fill this sucker up to the very top. Not quite to the top, but about like that. I always like to have an extra rag handy in my hand all the time. And you should also put a rag up under here so that if you have a spill, it's gonna go onto the rag and not onto your paint because this brake fluid could eat paint. So just kinda roughly put it in such a way that it'll hold itself. Now we just wanna crack the bleeder loose. We wanna loosen it. Make sure it stays on there and doesn't come off like that. Keep it on there like that. So it's loose right now and it's still got its seal on the uh, bleeder valve. So I'm gonna start pumping at the other end. You'll see bubbles come up and you'll notice that this fluid is draining really quick. So we definitely wanna make sure it doesn't get low because our, the goal here is to, for the master cylinder only to be sucking the brake fluid and not air. At the other end, I got fluid and air coming out. It's important that this is sealed up here because if we get any type of air in there, we're gonna have to start all over. I'm gonna do this about three reservoirs. So let it come down. You could even just let it sit there. It'll slowly flow. But the problem with that is you're not putting pressure. So there is gonna be some areas in the line that won't flow freely with the bubbles. So you're gonna make sure that you, you're pumping it because that's gonna push the air bubbles out. If for some reason you let this go low and it starts pumping air through it, you're gonna have to start all over again. Make sure at the other end that you're not having any sort of the hose coming off, air bubbles coming in, things like that. Be mindful of that, because the goal here is to get all of the air out of the brake line. So I've gone through about three of these. So I'm gonna go to the other end now. Okay, we wanna make sure that there's no leaking at all. Spin the hose, that kinda helps. And then we're just gonna tighten that sucker down and I can pull this back off of there. Okay, so I've got the other end closed up. If you notice, you'll see tiny little bubbles starting to form there. And I've got pressure, look. I could still squeeze the lever down to the grip, so we're definitely not good. Here's another little trick. If you have an adjuster up here, adjust that all the way out so the lever is completely as far as you can out so that when you squeeze it, it makes it further of a distance from the actual grip. So I'm gonna keep doing this. I keep doing that. This is actually almost good. See these little bubbles forming? I just keep going like this. I, sometimes I'll just like, I'll do quick like this and then I'll do a slow like half one. That seems to get a lot of bubbles up when you do that. To me, this is like therapy. So I've spent hours upon hours just like not trying to be fast, just watching these bubbles. So I know like the process. So it's a, quick pump like this and then a slow half and you always get some bubbles. Kind of a little trick that I learned. Shake the bars a little bit. You can move the uh, hose around, try to see if you got bubbles in there shaking loose. The lever is not hitting the grip and I have it squeezed all the way down. That's great. That's what you're looking for. I want to get the master cylinder about as full as that because once I put this lid on, you gotta be careful because it could overflow. I, I shouldn't have taken my little rag down, but just gotta be really careful to push it down. See that? We're good now. I'm just gonna wrench that down. This is where you gotta be careful when you start uh, squeezing the lid down because down the seam there, you'll get a drip. 
And like I said, this will eat paint, so you got to be careful that you don't have any dripping around there. Also, make sure that your banjo fittings, there's no um, any type of brake fluid around there. Especially when you squeeze it down really hard, very important to check that. Normally, what I do is just wipe it clean, and then take your finger and squeeze it down hard and fill around there. If you have any liquid at all on there, yeah, you're in trouble. The final step, if you cannot for the life of you get the pressure you want out of it, there's something going on. What you do is you crank this down super, super tight, squeeze your master cylinder, hold it down really, really tight, take a rag. Meanwhile, I'm holding it down. Take a rag, just like that. The reason why I'm wrapping this around is because what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna do it right now because I've, we're good, but if I was to do it, I would put a 12 millimeter wrench on there and while it's squeezed down, open, close, open, close. You don't want to let go like this because then it's going to suck air in. You always want to be pressing when that's open. So squeeze down, open. You're going to notice the lever goes down and then don't let go until you lock it back, you know, tighten it back down. Then you can let go. A lot of times you'll get brake fluid caught right or air caught right up in the top here. So you will leak when you do that. So be careful. That's the little trick to get the final air out of the system. So that is perfect. It keeps setting off this dang alarm. Final steps, just like at the top, I'm gonna squeeze the lever, make sure we have no leaks around our banjo fitting, or anything around here, no leaks at all. And of course, you wanna make sure that our little dummy bleeder valve, if you have that, is tight. Same with your bleeder valve. Make sure that's tight and then put your little dust cover back on, clean it off really good because remember this stuff eats paint and finishes and things like that so make sure of that and then you can you can try it. Turn your wheel, push the brake, turn it, we're good. If you guys enjoyed this content and you learned something make sure you hit the little subscribe button down below. Don't forget to leave a comment because the YouTube algorithm loves that and hit the little blue bell that's right on the side so you can get notified of new videos that come out. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next video.